A dashboard is an information management tool that receives data from a linked database to provide data visualizations. It typically offers high-level information in one view that end users can use to easily answer a single question. In many cases, dashboards can be configured to provide specific information and visualizations to the end user. You can easily create an interactive dashboard using Excel. All you need are a few pivot tables, some charts, and some slicers. Let's get started. To create the dashboard, we're going to use raw data, which in this case is a detailed list of transactions, which we're going to use in order to create visualizations. Raw data should be stored in table form. To convert your raw data to a table, you can select your data range by using the keyboard shortcut Control A. Then in the menu ribbon, click Insert, then click Table. Under the Table Design button, you can change the table styles and colors. You can also name your raw data table. For this example, we'll name our table Pay. This table name will be used later in the tutorial when we incorporate pivot tables. Raw data tables include many different types of data. Each column in this table should include a unique data type. For example, this table has dates, text, numbers, and more. Some of the data in this table is input manually, while other fields can be input using drop-down lists. Some metrics are calculated automatically based on your specific business needs. One of the greatest features of a table is that when you add a new raw data point, the calculated fields are automatically filled using the appropriate formula, which makes it easy to update your table without manually dragging and dropping formulas and functions and adjusting formats. For example, by using the drop-down menus for employee code and relevant dates, various fields including net salaries are automatically calculated. Step 2. Assign your business KPIs to be visualized. The most important step in creating a dynamic dashboard is assigning which key performance indicators you'll need to create visualizations for in the dynamic dashboard that will quickly answer common questions from top management. As we mentioned before, dashboards are an information management tool, so it's vital to select the most valuable information in order to assist management with their decision-making process. For example, we know that top management's goal is to decrease operating costs in order to increase profits. To assist with this process in our payroll dashboard, we visualize total over time using a red hourglass. We have line charts to show both employee net salaries and total deductions by month. Overtime by month is displayed in a bar chart, as is overtime by department. Additionally, our dashboard shows income tax amount in blue. It also features a pie chart to visualize net salaries by department. These KPIs are important for our management's profitability goals. However, every business has unique goals and KPIs. It is vital to understand exactly what information is most valuable for your organization's decision-making process and to include customized visualizations tailored to these needs. Step 3. Design your dashboard layout. The layout and colors that you use in your dashboard will be the first thing that will draw the eyes of top management, so it's important that your dashboard is specific, organized, and simple. While designing your dashboard, you'll want to choose simple colors. Keep in mind that the top left corner of your dashboard is likely the first zone that users will see when they open your dashboard. We advise you to add the most important figures or metrics to this zone, for example, things like total sales, profit, revenue, total salaries, and total costs. You can add icons and photos that represent your metrics and KPIs, which will help you to highlight these figures on the dashboard. To do so, in the menu ribbon, click Insert Icons. You then can use the search bar to find your desired icon. Select the icon and click Insert. Be sure to keep things as simple as possible, only add KPIs that are relevant to your business, and avoid creating visualizations for non-value metrics. Step 4. Pivot Tables now that we have assigned our KPIs and created the dashboard layout, it's time to analyze our raw data using pivot tables. Remember that we changed the name of our raw data table to pay in step one. In the menu ribbon, select table design and make sure that the appropriate table name is in the table name box. We're going to use the pay raw data table to create our pivot tables. Create a new sheet, which we will call pivot table. Select any cell in this sheet and click insert pivot table. A small window will pop up. In the table range box, you can enter the name of our raw data table, so we type pay and then click OK. Pivot table fields will appear on the right side of your screen. You can drag any data column to the row field, for example, employee code, gender, departments, year, month, or any non-measurable field. Use the values field for your data measures, for example, basic salaries. You can use the search box to easily find the field you want to analyze. 
Drag the basic salaries field to the values area, and to calculate total basic salaries, ensure that the selected value is measured as a sum. If the value field setting is not the field you need, you can change it by clicking on the desired field, then select value field settings. A small window will pop up and within the window, you can select the type of calculation needed for the selected field. In this case, we must select sum to get total basic salaries. Now go back to your dashboard sheet and link the total basic sales KPI icon to the grand total of the related metrics on the pivot table tab. On the pivot table tab, you can easily calculate all of your metrics by simply dragging all required measures to the values field and by completing the same steps that we previously discussed to display metrics on your dashboard. Once this step is complete, you can name each pivot table by clicking pivot table analysis, then pivot table name, then input a name which describes your pivot table. You will use these names later in the tutorial when we incorporate slicers. Step 5. Pivot Charts Pivot charts are a great way to add visualizations to your data. There are a lot of different chart types that you can use to represent your data. Chart selection will depend on the type of data you're trying to display. For example, if you need to visualize any metrics like net salaries or overtime amount over a period of time like years or months, you can use a line chart or a clustered column. This type of graph allows you to easily show changes in the trend line over time. If you need to compare a percentage of any metric by category, you can use a pie chart. Now, let's walk through how we can create pivot charts to visualize our data. The first type of pivot chart we're going to cover is a line bar chart. To create a pivot chart, you'll need to create a pivot table as we previously discussed. On your pivot table sheet, click any cell and select insert pivot table from the ribbon. A small window will pop up. In the table range box, Type your raw data table name, pay, and then click OK. Drag the desired metric to the row field area and drag the measures or metrics to the value field. In this case, we're going to prepare visualizations for net salaries by date by both month and year. To do so, drag payroll date to the row field and drag net salaries to the value field. You can see that dates field is collapsed into months. You can change the default by right-clicking and selecting group. In our case, we will select month and year, but you can select whatever breakdown you need based on your business data timeline. Now we're going to create a pivot chart. From the ribbon, select pivot table analysis, then pivot chart, then the charts window will pop up and you can select your chart type. In this case, we'll select a line chart. You can change your chart title and make it net salaries versus month year. The plus and minus buttons are used to collapse and expand between month and year views. Now let's do some formatting. Remove the total label to extend the scale view and you can add labels to your visual. You can also make some changes to the line colors and chart formats. Filter buttons can be easily hidden. Simply right click any filter button and click hide all field buttons on chart. Now move the chart you made to the dashboard sheet by right-clicking on the chart border. Click Cut, then go to the dashboard page, right-click, and select Paste Use Destination Theme. You can continue making additional chart formatting changes on the dashboard page. Move and resize the chart by dragging the border points. Double-click on the chart border and go to Format Chart Area to clear the border and remove the default fill color on the chart background. You can also remove Y-axis labels. Just click the label and select Delete from the keyboard. You can do the same with the grid lines. Don't forget to give a specific name to the pivot table, which will be reflected on the pivot chart. Now we're going to create two more charts, one for total deductions amount and one for total overtime amount over time using the same steps. First, we're going to create another pivot chart, this one for deductions. Go back to the pivot table sheet, click any cell, and select Insert Pivot Table. In the window, type Pay to select the raw data. Find the total deductions amount and drag it to the value field, then drag Payroll Date to the rows field. Right-click and select Group, and then select Month and Year. Now create the pivot chart. Select Pivot Table Analysis, then Pivot Chart. Select Line Chart from the Charts window. Cut and paste the chart onto your dashboard and then complete the formatting by adjusting the labels, changing colors and chart formats, adjusting your filter buttons, changing the chart size, and naming your chart. 
Create the third pivot chart, this one for overtime amount. Go back to the pivot table sheet, click any cell and select insert pivot table. In the window, type pay to select the raw data, find the total payroll date, then drag it down to the rows field. Then drag overtime amount to the values field. Right click and select group and then select month and year. Now create the pivot chart. Select pivot table analysis, pivot chart. Select the column chart from the charts window. Use the plus sign in the lower right hand corner to display the chart by month. Cut and paste the chart onto your dashboard and then complete formatting by adjusting labels, changing colors and chart formats, adjusting your filter buttons, changing the chart size and naming your chart. Now we're gonna add some pie charts to our dashboard. In this case, we would like to visualize the percentage of net salaries for each department. The best way to do so is in a pie chart. First, you'll want to create a new pivot table using the same method we've already discussed. We're still using the pay raw data and select departments as rows and net salaries as value. Once your pivot table is built, select pivot chart from the ribbon and select pie chart from the chart menu. Move the chart to the dashboard sheet and start to format the chart. Hide the filter buttons the same way and change your chart title. You can also resize the right side legends to make them more visible. Add labels to the pie chart. The default is values, but in this case, we want to change it to display percentages instead. You can also add a category name to the label, which allows you to remove the right side legend. Just select the legend and hit delete on your keyboard. You can also resize the entire pie chart to fill all of the chart area. To see the category value in the pie chart, just move your mouse cursor over any category. It will be displayed the same way it's shown on your pivot table, so don't forget to format that accordingly. From the design tab in the ribbon, you can easily change the chart colors and style. Don't forget to rename the pivot table to describe the related chart. Now let's create a stacked bar chart. Also called a stacked bar or column chart, these charts look like a series of columns or bars that are stacked on top of each other. Stack charts are an incredibly effective tool for comparisons when used correctly. They are designed to compare total values across categories. To create a stacked bar chart, first create a pivot table for two values. In this case, we will create a pivot table chart to visualize basic salaries and total allowance values for each department. Do the same previous steps by adding basic salary and total allowance as values and add departments as a row. Go to pivot chart and select the stacked bar option. In the pivot table, you can sort your data easily by right clicking on a specific value, select sort, and then choose sort smallest to largest or sort largest to smallest. Move this new chart to the dashboard page and adjust the chart size and position. Hide buttons and add and adjust the chart legend at which position you prefer. You can also change the bar chart colors for a specific value. Then you'll want to add labels to the chart so you can remove the X axis labels. There are so many other types of charts that you can utilize in your dashboard. These other charts will follow the same methods that we discussed. You can simply make pivot tables and build your pivot charts, then move them onto your dashboard. Now that our dashboard charts are complete, the last step is to create and connect filter slicers to your dashboard measures and charts. Step six, dashboard slicers. Slicers provide buttons that you can click to filter tables or pivot tables. In addition to quick filtering, slicers also indicate the current filtering state, which makes it easy to understand what exactly is currently being displayed. Let's go to our payroll dashboard and start to create these dynamic slicers. The first type of slicer we're going to cover is item slicers. To create an item slicer, you can select any pivot table and then go to the pivot table analyze menu in the ribbon and click the insert slicer button. A list of items will appear. You can select one or more options and then click OK. Cut and paste the slicers onto your dashboard page. Align the slicer and resize to fit the area. You can change the slicer color and style from the slicer ribbon to match the colors of the rest of your dashboard. You can also change the slicer button sizes to better fit the area. 
As you can see, when clicking on any item within the slicer menu, the changes are reflected only in the charts that are connected to the pivot table that you use to create the slicer. So in this case, only our top metrics are filtered by the slicer. To connect the slicer to other pivot tables, simply right click the slicer and select report connection. A list of pivot tables will appear with the names that we created before. You can add more pivot tables by clicking the checkbox, or you can select all pivot tables to be filtered with the selected slicer. As you can see, the filtering is now reflected in the additional charts that we've selected. Follow these same steps to add more slicers to your dashboard charts. Another option is a timeline slicer. To create a timeline slicer, select any pivot table, then go to the pivot table analyze menu in the ribbon and click the insert timeline button. Complete the same actions to format your slicer and to connect the timeline slicers to other pivot tables. Congratulations, you just made your first dynamic dashboard. Now it's time to impress your boss with this awesome display. Thanks for watching this tutorial and be sure to subscribe to Simple Sheets YouTube channel for more great tips like this one.